A dysregulated nervous system is one that is out of harmony with the environment. Dysregulation happens when the different parts of our brain are in disagreement about the level of threat in our environment. Find out more in this video. Once you've accumulated a lot of baggage in your nervous system and you've got a lot of unfinished business, um, what you'll find is that the response to threat is no longer smooth. So think of this like the brake and accelerator on your car. Imagine, imagine the brake and accelerator pedals on your car were being gradually covered with more and more and more glue, right? It's still a brake and accelerator and your car still works fine, but being able to press these pedals down and up becomes harder and harder. And you end up with a point where you can only really slam it down or slam it up because like the wires connecting it are all stuck. So it's basically on or off rather than this lovely smooth experience when you had this brand new car and you can drive it around like so smoothly. Now it's just this that terrifying nice. machine. Um, and this is what I would call a dysregulated nervous system. And what's interesting is not to push this analogy too far, but you can imagine these two cars next to each other driving around, say, central London. Mm -hmm. You've got the one with the perfectly smooth system and the one with the pedals that only go on and off. They could still do it. You know, they could still get around at traffic lights and slow traffic. But the person driving the broken car would have to be working so hard. You can imagine, like, the brakes are full on, the accelerator's full on, and the traffic lights. So the whole system is running so, it's so stressful to drive. But you can still make it through the traffic, just like we still make it through the day. There's so much harder work than it needs to be. And this is a dysregulated nervous system. And I would say that uh, when you look at kind of modern society, pretty much everyone in modern society is somewhere on a spectrum of dysregulation. Really, all of us are on a spectrum of some kind of dysregulation in our nervous systems. And this changes the way we behave. It changes the way we feel, the way we behave with ourselves, the way we behave with others and probably the way we behave as a society, and probably the way that we treat our planet. Mm. And sometimes we can invent the lion, and we invent the threat, don't we? Well, see, this is what's interesting. So if your body is screaming at you that you must run, right? Let's say right now you're having a panic attack, and you've got to get out of this room, yeah. right? <laughs> you're not going to do it because you're a professional, and you'll, you'll overrule that with your prefrontal cortex that'll say, no, no, I must sit here and interview Benjamin. <laughs> um, but there's a part of you that's like thinking, okay, if my body is giving me this strong signal of danger, there's got to be a danger, right? So you've got two ways of going. You either say, I'm going crazy, what's wrong with me? Or you say, actually, you know, all these people in this room with me are, are a threat. You know, the line is real. i got to get out of here. So one of the ways that we can resolve um, the, the conflict of dysregulation is by projecting all of this danger that's actually unfinished business from the past. We project it onto the here and now. So suddenly, you know, that person who's annoying you in a business meeting becomes the devil. And that's why you must leave your job immediately. Or, you know, you're boyfriend or girlfriend is a terrible human being or I mean have you noticed how everyone's ex-boyfriend or girlfriend is now these days always a narcissist it's like you know <laughs> anything that upsets us must have come from outside and must be happening here and now mm. um, and I think the reality is that you know things are really upsetting and upsetting things do happen but they don't necessarily happen to the scale with which we experience them in the here and now. What's happening is we're adding into that a lot of stuff which is unfinished from the past. So the, the lion which is real in the past, time travels to the present, and then it's misunderstood because the you know, lion isn't seen. It's just the, the consequences of it are felt. And if all we feel is a consequence but we can't see the lion, then we make up a lion. And I project that line onto you or others or my situation or my life. And you see how people are constantly running around, you know, changing their job or changing where they live or changing their house or changing their boyfriend or girlfriend or husband and wife, constantly thinking that that's the problem. You know, if I could just get the holiday right or the house right or the car right or you know, whatever mm. it is, uh, then I'll be better. But it doesn't work. Mm. 
And a lot of that comes from our thoughts, isn't it? So we threaten ourselves with our thoughts and then ultimately that changes our bodies and really they're just thoughts and what you're saying is that they're, they're, they're thoughts that are triggered by something that was that happened a long time ago and actually has nothing to do with the present day. That can often be the case. I mean, it's a bit like if you're trying to deal with a problem and you inaccurately diagnose the source of the problem, then whatever you do is not going to work. So, I don't know, imagine you're on a boat and it's filling up with water and you're poking around and you think, ah, I found a leak in the engine room. And then you start addressing that leak. It turns out it's not a leak. That's just the water cooling system of the engine. You're going to sink. And you can work as hard as you like on the problem in the engine, but you're still going to sink. <laughs>